Hi guys. Thanks for joining us on another Thursday. I see a lot of familiar faces. I'm going to give it just a second to see if anyone chimes in. All right, so some of you are repeats, so I just want to go over some of the ground rules for some of you that haven't joined us before. Um, I am Misty from the Gervais Syndrome Foundation, and I wanted to just let you know, if you could please mute yourself, um, it looks like most of you are, but I don't want um, the presenter to be interrupted during her presentation. Also, just hold all questions until the end. Um, and at that time, you can either put your questions in the chat box at the bottom of your screen, or you can ask those questions live. Um, this session will be recorded and also put on our website for you to view later if you would like. And I am happy to introduce you guys to Dr. Sarah Mullins. She is a Gervais mom and a family physician. She attended Duke, Uni Duke University. University of Maryland Medical School and was chief resident at Christiana Care Facility or a family medical medicine program. Goodness. All right. She volunteers for DSF and is a Delaware Epilepsy Foundation board member as well. She's here today to talk to you about the ketogenic diet and um, make sure you guys use her as a resource and ask her lots of questions when this is over. I'm sure she's got some great information. So Sarah, it is all yours. Great, thank you. So I'll, I'll share my screen here and uh, get the presentation up. All right. Great, so welcome everybody. Um, I wanted to talk about the ketogenic diet since this is something that my family lived through for five years or 5,478 meals. Um, and it, this is the real ketogenic diet. So the ketogenic diet that was pioneered by the um, epileptologists at Johns Hopkins University in the 1940s as a treatment for epilepsy. Um, so not the weight loss diet that your friends and family might be trying. Um, this is the, the real deal. Um, so my disclosures are that um, I serve on the Epilepsy Foundation of Delaware as a board member in the Professional Advisory Council. I am a family physician and I speak for Allergan um, migraine topics. But this topic and this conversation today is not medical advice. This is simply my own experiences with my own little guy, AJ, who you see here feeding the chickens as he'd love to do. So I'll introduce you to AJ. Um, AJ had his first seizure at five months, like many of our kids do, and uh, we were lucky enough to be identified early and receive the diagnosis of Gervais at eight months old. Um, we experienced status seizures monthly for his first year and had a nice use day at 18 months that was particularly harrowing. There was really not very much good control on Topamax and Keppra in our previous trials with Trileptal prior to our diagnosis and some steroids um, were not very helpful. Uh, we were recommended for the ketogenic diet, and this was based on seeing that the kids with Gervais don't respond to medications very well. Um, the wisdom is that if you don't respond to two medicines with epilepsy, you should be offered the ketogenic diet, and so we were. Um, that ketogenic diet maintained us for five years status-free, which gave us lots and lots of trips to the beach, uh, cannonballs off the diving board, and everything else that we could have enjoyed. Um, truly, truly gave us a fantastic quality of life and really great seizure control. Um, and after five years, when we started to see some breakthrough seizures, um, we actually weaned off the diet. And um, my son, AJ, passed away from SUDEP at eight years old. Um, what we're learning um, from the science and the research about the ketogenic diet is that it is protective against SUDEP. So some of the most recent research with mouse models that were Gervais mouse models were found to be protected against SUDEP due to the ketogenic diet, which we learned afterwards. Um, so I share this passionately with you so that if your family can benefit from it, I would love for you to learn. And if you already are on the ketogenic diet and you just wanna pick up tips and tricks, um, please, uh, please lend uh, an ear. 
So traditionally, when you start the ketogenic diet, you are admitted to the hospital for a week. And that week, you do usually get education classes, they start the diet, and this initiation process is um, somewhat dangerous. So that's why it's done under hospital supervision. Um, you can have trouble with glucose dropping very, very low. You can have problems with excessive ketosis. And so all these things are watched while you're in the hospital. Now you're sent home with a scale, sometimes a little fancy spatula kit, and your ratio of fat to protein. So for us, we, we spent most of our years at 3.3 to 1 keto. That was our um, keto ratio. Um, you also get that access to the keto calculator and some basic recipes. They'll show you the Charlie Foundation and Matthew Friends out of the UK. Um, there are books. The top one is the one I like the best, the Keto Cookbook. Um, and there's also ones that kind of talk about helping your kids succeed on the ketogenic diet. But my talk today is not about intro to keto. So you'll get all this education if you do decide to get on the ketogenic diet. My talk today is about experiences that we learned after five years of weighing out every meal on a gram scale. So I think this was the kind of stuff that I wish I could have known before I started keto or maybe even two years into keto if I hadn't yet encountered it, to have somebody who had done it before me to tell me what I should know. So many families look at their kids, their toddlers, and they see a diet that looks like this. So we got plenty of goldfish crackers, we got our chicken nuggets, a healthy dose of ketchup, maybe some string cheeses and fruit snacks. Um, but a family that starts out like this looks sometimes that the ketogenic diet is not possible. It says, how could we possibly get that going with the some starting place for a diet? Um, and so the question I get is, what if I have a picky eater? Um, so many kids are picky. Um, so AJ was three when he started the diet. So he was in the peak of his pickiness, right? Being three years old. But Gervais kids are even tougher. So they have their texture issues, swallowing issues. Um, some kids are tube fed. Um, lots of kids have poor appetite for other reasons, just related to kind of a complex syndrome of Gervais. Um, so what do we do? Well, the fats are a little bit flexible. So you can do fats in your diet that are oil based, um, delivered in a syringe, um, cream-based that could be drank or even used as a spoon if you whip your cream, butter, which can be melted and added to sauces or eaten as pats, um, and then mayo, which many families will do straight up with a spoon or smeared on, you know, dipping sauces. Uh, so what we did when we had our picky guy is we just leaned into our favorites. So I, I was sharing earlier that I had a ketogenic diet kid that didn't like meat. So for the goodness sake, how do you do keto if you don't like meat? Um, well, we ate pizza three meals a day for a good chunk of those years. And those pizzas were nutritionally complete ketogenic ratio, perfect little pizzas. And so everybody who knew us knew that AJ and his pizza were coming with us, whatever meal we were coming for, or whatever school packed lunch was coming. We were also able to use tacos, peanut butter and jelly, mac and cheese, and chicken nuggets. And those are favorites for kids of all ages, but also the picky kids. And so if you got some texture problems or really you're got, you got to go with smooth textures, or maybe you've got a kid who only eats crunchy. We had a crunchy guy, so um, he ate the cheese crackers, the chips, um, peanut butter cookies and peanut butter cups like Reese's style. And these were the kind of things that he really liked and he responded to. Um, I was never, ever going to get my kid to eat steak. He just wouldn't do it and, and probably was cheaper that he didn't like it anyway. And then what if the kiddo is gluten-free or vegetarian or dairy-free or has allergies? Keto has been done by every single type of family and all of these restrictions. And you'll find in our community an example of each of these kids for sure. Um, the traditional ketogenic diet is this three to one, two to one, four to one type ratio of the fats to the protein. Um, but modified keto is kind of a Look more forgiving version that allows a little bit more carbohydrates. Um, one of the things that we missed a lot when we were on traditional keto was the fruits and vegetables. We had a kid that loved fruit and it was so hard to limit his fruit as a family doctor knowing that he could definitely benefit from eating fruits and vegetables. Uh, modified Atkins is yet an even easier version or lighter, more forgiving version of traditional or modified keto, um, but it's certainly along the spectrum so that they find that kids that do great on uh, traditional keto sometimes do really well on a modified Atkins, um, but kids who do not do well on traditional keto often don't do well on a modified Atkins. So it's sometimes worth giving it a try um, and then lightening up the version as the kid gets older. 
So here's AJ with his pizza. Um, so we like to use the crust that was made from the Keto Cuisine powder. This is a fat-based emulsified powder that replaced flour. Then we would use mayo and eggs, and we would chop it with cheese and oregano, basil. And um, if we were in the mood, we'd add a little bit of uh, pepperoni. Sometimes they were just plain cheese pizzas. But this was kind of how we got through our picky eater doing keto without any meat. Um, we'd add protein powder to the mix for the crust as well to kind of get that extra protein that he wouldn't do through the meat. Here are some other examples. We used um, pretzels that were baked with the same keto cuisine powder um, with cheese in them. So these are cheesy pretzels. And then we had um, sugar cookies shaped for hearts for Valentine's Day, also using the powder. Um, so you can make these versatile uh, products that have protein baked into them. We baked protein powder into every single one of our uh, starchy type products just because uh, we weren't doing the meat so easily. And here he is with some chicken nuggets. So when he was little, he would do chicken nuggets a little bit easier and we would make a uh, oil and ketchup mix that he would dip his chicken nuggets into. Um, you can see in the little center, con center uh, compartment, he's got some fluffy cheddar cheese chips. These were microwaved um, very, very crispy, light as air. You can actually buy these at the, at the grocery store now for um, families. And then his dinosaur cup carried with him the cream and uh, water mix, which we called milk. And that cream water 50-50 really helped with getting the fats in. So he would just drink down a good old cup of milk with all of his foods and that would augment the fat for his meal. Here's the Charlie Foundation's fabulous looking picture of what I made in my kitchen. Um, so these chicken nuggets here have that ketchup dipping sauce with the extra fat in them. Um, looks pretty appetizing. Looks like something a kiddo would eat. And then since the uh, goldfish crackers were definitely a favorite before the ketogenic diet, we would make goldfish crackers sometimes uh, in the shape of Christmas trees or gingerbread men or any other holiday shape, um, baking that protein powder into the cheese chips so, or the cheese crackers, uh, just like those goldfish crackers. So where do you get ideas? Well, we got them a lot from the Keto Cookbook, um, which was um, a mom who wrote a book after her daughter with epilepsy went through doing uh, the, the keto diet. Um, but also Charlie Foundation would put out holiday-based recipes, um, different cuisines. So if you wanted something that was um, uh, spicy Indian flavors, there's lots of variety there. Matthew's Friends is out of the UK. So there's some different foods based out of there. Um, Keto Calculator sometimes has preloaded uh, recipes that are appealing for families. But frankly, now there are keto options that there never were before, uh, you know, 10 years ago, like zero carb bread, noodles that are without carbohydrates, almond crackers. Um, these were all things that we utilized, but really you start to see them everywhere when you start looking. Um, we used a lot of health food stores rather than the regular grocery stores to find these, but really now things can be delivered from just about anywhere. Um, there are premixed powders and liquids to help with the recipes. So if you have a G2 kiddo and you wanted to buy something like a keto cow, that was the perfect ratio for um, three to one or four to one. Um, also, G2 families will sometimes blend their own recipes using solid foods. Um, so putting the fats and the proteins all blended together and putting it through the G2 in place of these liquids or formulas. Um, the keto cuisine powder um, and protein powders um, come in bags. So this bag you see the, on, on the, the white bag here um, is a five to one baking mix ratio. So we've, we had a lot of good luck making pizza crusts and, and the, the cookies and the pretzels that you saw before um, because it does take the place of flour. And so if you add eggs and you add butter, you can really make a lot of baked goods. Um, the middle has these miracle noodles. So miracle noodles came in all sorts of shapes. So elbow macaroni, angel hair pasta, um, regular spaghetti, fettuccine flat noodles. And it's made from a seaweed actually. Um, and the seaweed um, uh, is, is very, very high fiber, zero calories and carbohydrates. And so you can toss it with whatever fat uh, sauce that you want. It can add meat to it and make it into, you know, spaghetti or mac and cheese. And, and that, that really is a, a versatile, um, flavorless noodle. So you can really make whatever dish you like for that. Um, the almond thin crackers um, were one of the early ones we found that were gluten free and were essentially um, high protein, high fat, 
low carbohydrate crackers. And so we were able to use those quite a bit. Um, they were a little pricey for us, but uh, certainly if you, if you look into different options, you can kind of stretch out these um, specialty products. And here's an example of one of those things. So here's peanut butter and jelly, uh, a la keto. Um, so this is a flax bread that um, is a very, very high fiber, high protein bread that we made, um, that we toasted and then used a mix of peanut butter and butter for the butter, or uh, peanut butter part of it, then sliced some grapes as our jelly. And so our peanut butter and jelly sandwich was just a great hit. And um, although it was a lot of work, it's nice to have something that is kind of resembling its old uh, cousin um, non-keto version. So what about the whole family? I hear this too. I've got, I've got other kids at home um, or, you know, everyone in the house seems to eat things differently. Uh, so it's really important that everybody in the household who's going to be taking part in this makes the decision to go keto together. Um, it is too much work for one person to take on on their own and sharing the labor was really important. Uh, my husband was home full time with my kids uh, for 10 years uh, while we were going through all of this and um, I work full time. So I I would batch cook on the weekends, he would weigh things out on the gram scale at the meal time, and kind of together we would, we would marry together this plan for working on keto. Um, consider having everyone in the house eat healthier. So, you know, if people think, oh, it'd be so sad not to have cookies and crackers around. Well, it's not super healthy for everybody in the house to be eating cookies and crackers anyway. So maybe this is the time where we have everybody eat more uh, lean and lower carbohydrate. And that might help a lot. And, and we really did that at our house since my, my daughter was very little when my son started on ketogenic diet. So it just was gonna be, here's what we eat at our house. And, and frankly, I think I still eat this way uh, just out of habit of having done it for five years. Uh, we want to make sure that everybody who's important comes to understand what keto means. Now, what that might include is if you have a daycare provider or a, a babysitter or a home nurse or an aide, um, they can't feel that a cheat day is okay or that a treat would be all right just once in a while. It's a very strict diet and you can't deviate from it. There are children that if they picked up a Cheerio that was a stray Cheerio on the floor and popped it in their mouth would go into a burst of seizures. Uh, so it might be important to engage everyone by having them maybe come to a keto class, um, have them understand websites, social media, and books that are based on the topic. And I'm a big proponent of having everyone in the family see the good and the bad of Gervais. Um, I somehow managed to have some family members that live far away who had never once witnessed a seizure. And it's a lot easier to have family buy-in when they've watched your child seize. And I think the family members that didn't watch my child seize certainly had a harder time understanding why we had to be on such a strict diet. Um, but the ones that watched him or sat with him in the ICU or you know, rode the ambulance with us certainly did understand that that was an important part of this. Um, siblings can help or hurt, so let them help. Let them tell you um, uh, what they'd like to be a part of and, and really uh, empower them to, to be kind of some of the watchdogs in the family. Um, I have a, a great story about my little three-year-old talking to my 18-month-old daughter, and AJ said to her, Hannah, I'm going to eat a banana. And she turned to him in her little mouth and said, AJ, that's not keto. And I, I almost fell on the floor hearing that. She was so young to understand that, but she did understand that the bananas were off limits. And that was truly, truly important. Um, so please utilize the family the best way you can and have them understand it from the heart that you're understanding it, that we wouldn't be doing keto just for the fun of it. We're doing it because it's necessary. So the center picture shows my little family at the time that keto was starting. My husband was full-time working uh, or full-time at home with my son and my daughter. And with the dish towel slung over his shoulder, he was doing all the keto cooking and, and uh, help serving during that time with an infant in his arms. And so certainly I understand where people are coming from with um, the burden of the family responsibilities at the same time. So we see off to the left, my mother working with my daughter on doing some batch cooking for keto. Um, she lived in Michigan when we lived in Delaware and she would ship us boxes of keto cookies that she had made or uh, keto 
crackers that she had made. And so it really kind of lessened the burden for us. And she had a scale and she used the keto calculator. Um, it was something of a, a, a labor of love for all of us. And on the right, you see Hannah, when she's a little bit older, she can actually weigh out things on her own. She's got that stick of butter and it looks like she's making probably some uh, Reese's peanut butter cups for, uh, for AJ's lunch there. So that work is certainly offset by batch cooking. Uh, what we would do for our pizza crusts is we would make 25 pizza crusts on a weekend all at once and weigh them all out. So that way they'd be in the freezer, they'd be in the fridge. And if for each meal, you just kind of pull it on out and you just weigh the ingredients right there on that time uh, that you were serving it. And if you can let other people cook, let them help. I mean, I think for the people who feel so helpless to help us, there's nothing they can do in the middle of the night when we're riding the ambulance to the hospital, but gosh, they can make muffins. I mean, this is something that a lot of people feel like they can really help with. Um, and it does get easier once you're used to it. Uh, my sister gave me this uh, hand scratched uh, recipe that I had uh, left for her when she was watching my son. And uh, I thought, gosh, looking at it now, it looks so hard, but it, at the time it really was so hand in hand with our regular life. I mean, it just became part of our living, breathing life. Here's kind of a batch cooking example. We have in the orange uh, upper left corner here, a creamsicle um, pudding. So it's kind of like a jello, but with made with heavy whipping cream and orange extract. Um, on the right hand side, we have some muffins um, and uh, they have some, uh, some looks like cheese flavoring for those. And then on the bottom right, we have our peanut butter cookies. Um, peanut butter cookies with protein powder was a mainstay for a lot of our, our recipes. And on the bottom left, we have some uh, uh, almond slices with uh, coconut, uh, kind of like a trail mix uh, that were batch cooked for, for lunches. So keto is not all roses. So for one thing, it doesn't work for every family. Um, we had such a dramatic, dramatic success story. I do feel like I want to tell everyone, you know, they can try it, but it's not without its problems. Um, the side effects of constipation, kidney stones and fractures do kind of plague a lot of the families that try to work with keto. Um, you can beat that constipation with fiber supplementation. We used to use chia seeds a fair bit um, in order to keep everything flowing since constipation is not comfortable. Fluids, we were pushing lots of fluids in order to prevent the constipation and the kidney stones. Um, the urine sticks that you can use to measure the ketones in the urine can also measure for blood. And so when we had some painful urination one night, we were able to check and see that yes, we did have a little bit of blood, which did pass without too much incident, but I'm pretty sure we were dealing with some micro kidney stones that night. Um, and when he was real little, he stepped over a baby pool, caught his toe on the edge of a little plastic pool and broke his foot. So that seems like a pretty low impact for a fracture. And sure enough, we were taking vitamin D after that by the orthopedic surgeon's uh, recommendations since keto and lots of anti-epileptic drugs can decrease your bone density and cause fractures to be more likely. Uh, what about sick days? So say a kid takes a couple bites, they don't feel good, they're not gonna eat the rest of the meal. I mean, that induces crisis mode for a lot of keto families because if you made uh, a couple different things for a meal and they only ate half of it and only had the fat in it but not the protein, now you're out of ratio. Um, so what some families will do is with a perfect ratio meal, something like a ketogenic uh, cheesecake, every bite is a perfect ratio. So it doesn't matter if they have 10 bites or if they have two bites, they've got the perfect three to one, four to one, two to one ratio, whatever it is that you're prescribed. Um, and that can help a lot on sick days where you just can't count on them to finish the meals. Um, sneaking food can be a real big problem. I mean, my, my son would wake me up in the middle of the night and actually tell me if he was gonna sneak food. He'd say, mom, I'm gonna eat something. And I would wake up in the middle of the night and run downstairs and sure enough, he had fruit snacks open and he hadn't eaten a single one. So not all kids will tell on themselves before they eat it. But um, one of the things we would have to do if he did get into something would be to add fat and we could add it back in the form of cream or oil to kind of offset some of that. Um, we were very lucky that sneaking food never produced any seizures for us because we had a really, really stable control with Depakote and keto. Um, but it is the kind of thing you have to think about if a kiddo gets into something like a banana where really the carbohydrates are just so high. 
Now, overketosis is also not very friendly for kids. Um, and so it feels kind of bad. It would cause my son to do crying fits. He'd cry and cry and cry and cry. And we'd check his urine ketones if he had a day like that, just to see if that was what was off. Um, and we would really treat it with a grape. Actually, we would give him a, a piece of fruit and that would kind of help bring down his ketone levels, kind of help him with a little bit of carbohydrates. Um, and that, that was a really great find for us that, that really overketosis was contributing to these episodes of just feeling really terrible. So we had a bike lock on our fridge. So you see him trying to uh, manipulate the little bike lock for uh, getting into the fridge. And um, the middle picture is one of those days where, gosh, you know, we were at the gym cafe and he ate his meal and then he passed right out on the swim bag. So, um, you know, gosh, if he didn't finish his meal, I'm not going to shake him awake to get the food into him. So we have to have a game plan for what to do if he's uh, not finished his meal. And then that picture on the right is really what he would look like when he was overly ketotic. He would cry and cry and cry and cry. So we were happy to have a solution for that. Now, what about medicines and supplements? So ketogenic diet, some people are able to come off of medicines, but many do continue medicines for other things, um, behavior or other medical issues they might have. Um, so it's important to switch your medicines over to tablets when possible. So AJ did learn how to swallow tablets at age three because we were not going to do uh, a lot of um, liquids that were sugar-free. Um, they, they tasted kind of poorly. They were actually kind of tough for him to get down. So um, we had some powders that we did need to mix. The Depakote sprinkles were one of them that we've continued in the applesauce and oil uh, mixture so that it matched a three to one ratio. Other families are doing pita butter and butter or a keto pudding or yogurt to put their powders and their granules in. Um, the supplementation is important for fiber, I'm making sure you get lots and lots of fiber, lots of water, um, flavored waters that are calorie free. Um, some families do tea, especially um, in countries outside the US, a lot of kids drink tea. Um, and so that's a, that's a lot, big way to get your fluids in. And then the multivitamins. So the ketogenic diet is not nutritionally complete. It is missing a significant amount of nutrients that kids need to grow properly, um, calcium being a part of it. Um, so the powdered vitamins that are out there, there's something like fruity vites um, and um, uh, uh, other powders that are nutritionally complete keto um, supplements. Um, or you can do them separately. Yeah. But I think what we were offered was six and a half tablets of multi, of, for my multivitamins or um, a packet of powder. And so we chose the packet of powder in order to get the, the fluids in and or the vitamins in and that we would mix it with our applesauce and oil to get that in. And this is what our medicines looked like even on keto. So I think that's the other thing to remember is that with kids with complex intractable epilepsy, um, if you have a, a, a kiddo that um, does well on keto, it doesn't necessarily mean that um, everything else will go away. And so uh, we, we were also treating ADHD and we had um, Depakote on board for most of this so that we were making sure that um, kids were able to stay controlled um, for behaviors, not just for um, the uh, epilepsy. Now, this is a good example of a, a kind of diverse meal. Um, this is his applesauce and oil up in the corner. Um, we have a little bit of uh, uh, watermelon as a treat up in the, uh, with a toothpick, so it's fun to eat, little fine motor skills. His uh, milk, which is the heavy whipping cream and water, and then those uh, seaweed noodles that were pictured before with some Velveeta and a little bit of butter and milk. Um, mixing it up into a mac and cheese kind of preparation. Um, the cheese chips are basically just shredded cheese microwaved on a, a, a little piece of parchment paper and that would make this little crispy cheese chip. Um, and then those are those almond crackers with butter, so butter and crackers as a, as a kind of meal in the front there. Lots of diversity, lots of textures, lots of fine motor stuff. What about being away from home? Um, so there's a lot of dairy um, and meat in these kinds of um, uh, preparations. And so what I would say is packing the lunch with coolers and trying to get the teachers, the teacher's aide, school nurse to really understand the whole idea that these kids can't skip out on any part of the meal. They can't leave some of it and pack it home to come home to you because that would just really blow our minds if we opened up the lunchbox to find, you know, all of the fat still on the, in the lunchbox. Um, putting the 
um, IEP details to include the ketogenic diet that is really important. I mean, I think that really does um, factor well into other health impairments so that they can make sure that they're um, getting the um, recipe that they need into their lunchbox and making sure that they're getting all the instructions as the teachers um, uh, want them to. So keeping the treats at school, if you have a surprise event, will be so critical for the kiddo not to be disappointed if someone brings in a cupcake or some uh, you know, school surprise that has um, food as part of it. Um, because believe it or not, they don't know in advance a lot of times that the, the teachers don't know that the kids are bringing in something for a birthday. So we used to keep um, frozen um, calorie-free water popsicles at school. So that way, if all the kids were getting you know, a big, treat for you know staying quiet then AJ could have his treat just like everybody else um, and and if you have special treats see if you can manage to make it similar so, so we used to for birthday parties ask you know hey, what are you guys serving and they'll say oh chocolate cupcakes because you can make a chocolate keto cupcake and if that's something that they like then you make it the same um, and really focusing on non-food gifts and rewards whenever you can. Um, rewards for us would be things like puzzles, stickers, chalk, small toys. Um, and, and it really helped for this to be kind of an avoided fight to have something that was not food related. Um, when he was in kindergarten, they had a gingerbread decorating uh, party and my husband made um, colored sprinkles out of Truvia um, uh, artificial sweetener um, and a little bit of uh, ketogenic frosting and my gingerbread cookies are made out of um, the uh, the keto friendly powders so that you made a, like a sugar cookie and that way he could participate in the activity which was gingerbread cookie decorating. Um, that was the kind of thing that you know for us it would cause a lot of headaches because boy what are we going to do with this kid during the time that the kids are decorating cookies and, and you can make it so that it's inclusive. Um, my son was um, in a mainstream classroom with a one-on-one -on -one aide and so there was the possibility for him to kind of participate but in his own unique way have these um, uh, peanut butter cookies and the Reese's peanut butter cups in different shapes for treats. Um, that, those were great, great savior for, uh, you know, being able to get people to be included for birthday parties and holidays. And um, uh, puzzles were always, always the reward for things that went well. So when we did ABA and we were rewarding at the end of the week with something, the puzzles were a great way to do it. And we have quite our fair share of puzzles. Off to the left was AJ's birthday party with his class. And so they had a sticker project that they were doing. And so we were not gonna bring food on our birthday because certainly food was a, a sticking point for us. So instead we had a sticker project and that engaged all the kids in a way that they could be inclusive without being related to food. And then on the right hand side, our family attended a birthday party where AJ had his own cupcake and his own milk, um, just like all the other kids and uh, were able to attend and, and participate with his own um, similar project there. Um, peanut, Reese's peanut butter cups are a big part of Easter. So when we hunt Easter eggs, we uh, put punt pennies in our Easter eggs. And actually to this day, my daughter still hunts eggs with pennies in them, um, even, even though uh, she could certainly put jelly beans in them. Uh, but we, uh, we still keep the tradition and um, they're, they're pretty good looking uh, Reese's peanut butter cups actually. Now this was for Valentine's Day. This was a um, parfait made out of strawberries and heavy whipping cream with little chocolate hearts on it. And this was something, again, that everybody could participate in, you know, a Valentine's Day treat and it was keto. And so I always encourage folks to branch out, bring foods that the kiddo can serve themselves if they are working on fine motor skills. Um, I, I had an eight-year-old that had hands like an 18-month-old, basically. He couldn't hold a pen. He wasn't able to write. Um, he was a typer in his classroom, so when the other kids wrote, he would type. Um, but I think as far as being able to feed himself, he was able to do a good job with that, and I think encouraging him when he's motivated to do so uh, made a big difference, you know, make, making sure that he did have the opportunity to use a spoon, that he did have to use his hands to serve himself. And then my final uh, comment is just, you can do this. Um, I, I know there are hard things in front of you for trying it, um, but if it gives you the about a month of uh, uh, freedom and seizure freedom that we had, uh, I highly, highly encourage it.
I'm going to take a peek at the chat. Yeah, there's not anything. Someone's asking how old he was. And oh, as okay. Said, you know, yeah. um, I did let them know that sadly he passed away four years ago. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, he was still on keto. Or no, he was not on keto. You had taken him off of keto. That's right. Um, and it may have been someone that missed the very beginning um, mm -hmm. when Sarah had said that uh, she didn't find out until after AJ passed away that keto can actually help uh, prevent suit up, but she had taken him off. How long before Sarah, before he passed? Yeah, so we had, um, uh, it, was, it was about, let me think here, it was about nine months afterwards. Um, we had had, uh, right after we came off, we had a status seizure and then um, he was four months seizure free and then had a second status seizure and that, and that was when he had died, yeah. And someone else had asked, um, let's see, what was the ideal ketosis range for you? So for us um, on the on the urine sticks, we we like to stay in moderate ketosis. Um, so when we started seeing large ketones, um, it, it, things were not happy. Um, so we really had to strike a, a good range, um, and we were we we stayed in ketosis pretty much all the time. I mean, even with some of the the mistakes where he ended up sneaking food, we really never rocked our ketosis. It, we were really very solid there. And we were on a 3.3 .3 to one ratio just most of the time. I don't know um, if this is right. Uh, refresh my memory. You, you may know better than I, um, than my memory serves me. Um, for you guys that don't know, my son Braxton is 12 and we did keto from uh, when he was six years old to eight years old. Um, and I remember asking the doctor, well, what do I do if he gets sick and he doesn't eat? Um, you're, when you don't eat, your body actually produces ketones, so you, you actually stay in ketosis. So I, I wanted to add that little tidbit in, so that way they're like, oh, if my child gets sick and he doesn't eat, it's going to throw him off. Um, am I saying that correctly? That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, thought, I thought so. It's just been many, many years. Yeah. <laughs> um, is there any other questions on here? You guys feel free to take yourselves off of mute and ask. Yeah. Uh, live if you want. If you want to use the chat box, that is fine too. Somebody, somebody had asked how many meals a day. Yeah, I think it depends on um, what you can fit in for your kiddo and what your diet plan is with your nutritionist. So for us, um, from ages three to ages eight, um, we did three meals a day with one snack. Mm -hmm. um, and then we had kind of a medicine snack at bedtime because we needed applesauce and oil to give a powdered medicine. And I know the, the meal portions may look small to you guys that aren't used to seeing like um, keto meals. Uh, before Braxton went on keto, he was like hungry all the time. He would go up to like people he didn't even know, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. And it looked like his parents didn't feed him. I'm like, we feed him all the time. Um, I think the, the problem was is that he just liked carbs. And carbs do not fill you. Fat fills you um, is what we had found out on the keto. So... Once he got on the ketogenic diet, like he was never hungry. He ate every bit of his meal and he was satisfied. We never ever had him saying, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, when's lunch, when's dinner? He was satisfied. When we took him off keto and he started back just eating whatever, um, it's back again. I'm hungry, when's lunch, when's dinner? Um, so don't let those little tiny meals scare you uh, when you look at them and say, oh my gosh, my kid would be starving if that's all the food they got. They are full after they eat their food. They really are. There's something else in the chat box. We have two more questions in here. Um, would it be okay to start mad and move to keto? My daughter is three and likes food. Yeah, um, so what, as we were kind of looking at the research, it looked like if you did modified Atkins, um, which is kind of 
you know, easy to do. That that one is not usually needed to be medically supervised. Um, you may not get a response and it doesn't mean that you wouldn't do well on keto. So remember, if you do well on keto, you might do well on modified Atkins, but not really necessarily in the reverse. Um, and then of course you'd wanna do medically supervised keto since uh, we're, you're generally hospitalized for several days because of the danger of starting keto unsupervised. So you can have very low blood sugars, you can have um, trouble with with um, over ketosis. And so they check labs every day and make sure that they monitor them. Um, but modified Atkins is actually kind of what, it's just low, low carbohydrate, high fat, high protein um, is what we were advised to start leading into before we went into the hospital for keto, um, just to kind of wean yourself from the habit of eating carbohydrates. And, and so that, that's a, it's a good start. And, and certainly, you know, the, the idea behind ketosis is that it's neuroprotective so that the brain uses the ketones for energy and not glucose, which tends to keep the brain from being less irritable, which is how seizures propagate. Um, I see another question about not being hungry. Um, that I think for kids that are not great eaters. Um, the fear of keto is real. I think that's a, it's a real um, uh, idea. I mean, I think kids not on keto who are Gervais kids also don't eat sometimes. And, and we have a couple of families that just struggle with that. And there are some things that, um, uh, that have been used for appetite stimulation medicine wise. Um, but I found for us, really, when he wasn't interested in eating, it was because the food we were making was boring. And a lot of what we were doing, if we switched it up, like, let's say, you know, we tried something new, we made it in a new shape, we, you know, spiced it up, put a frilly toothpick on, toothpick on it or some, you know, we did something really fancy with it, that would kind of reintroduce his interest in food. Um, and that would make things easier. Um, distractions also seem to work. So if we were all like singing at the dinner table and all eating and, and then he would eat and he would kind of finish up, it was almost like we just had to get it, get through it um, to get the minimum amount of calories in for him. Um, yeah. Oh, wow. yes. Yes, I recognize your name right away. <laughs> I'm sure, Leslie, you have things to share that you could make 10 PowerPoints. <laughs> and right. multivitamins, only magnesium, vitamin D, probiotic, B6, and fish oil. Been on keto for years, labs are normal, growth above average. Do you think it's still necessary? Well, now, they're definitely, yeah. child is on keto, yes, okay. Yeah, so I think um, when they're watching your labs, that's the big thing. Um, so, so we when we had our labs, um, we were on all of the supplements, the the vitamin D, the magnesium, and everything, and um, we've discovered that our selenium levels were low. And I thought, oh gosh, selenium. What foods have selenium? So we we looked and we looked and we found out that actually Brazil nuts are high in selenium. So then we gave two grams of selenium in the form of Brazil nuts every single day. And so you, you start to kind of see on the labs what your kiddo might need. And if you if you don't have deficiencies, I mean, that that's probably because of the diversity of foods, you know, you're able to get in. Um, like I said, without meat, we were we were kind of hard pressed to find a lot of um, options. But certainly there there are deficiencies that can develop. And that's why the labs and the neurolo neurology follow up is so important when you're on the ketogenic diet. There he goes. Yeah, sneaking everything into into everything. <laughs> I wanted to add too that we had actually tried the modified Adkins first, um, and it made him worse. Um, so we were very nervous about starting um, keto, but it was it was life changing for us. Um, so I don't know why. Um, the dietitian we were seeing up at Lori's uh, Children's had also said that she had seen that happens sometimes in children. So I, I just wanted to add, like if you guys did try the modified Atkins and it made it worse, don't just throw out keto because it's still an option. Um, sorry, but isn't the principle of both the same ketosis? So why would it make it worse? Did they offer you any explanation for that? Sarah, do you know why it would make it worse? Because I don't remember, my son is now 12 and he did that at six. So it's six years ago. I, I don't remember the explanation I got, but I know there was one. Yeah, I, I don't believe most families achieve ketosis on modified Atkins. Um, there, there are a lot of carbohydrates on modified Atkins. And so I, it, that neutralizes any ketosis you might have. Um, so then you're kind of left with low carb. 
Um, so you're high fat, high protein, low carb, but not ketosis, actual ketosis. Yeah, I mean, we fell out of ketosis as soon as we went to a two to one ratio. So, I mean, it's very, wow. very sensitive for, for people. I mean, we never, ever really fell out of it when we were three to one, but as soon as we hit two to one, we were out of it. Um, so, so very, very sensitive, narrow band there. Does anyone have any other questions? Um, I have a question. So my son is five and we're starting um, the modified Atkins because um, we had gone to see the doctor and she didn't think that keto was going to work for him. He's super, super picky eater. Like he only eats when he sits with his iPad and he like we actually feed him. He has no interest in food besides for like maybe three foods. So um, she said to start the modified Atkins. Um, but I'm really worried about it because the three foods that he eats, um, it's just hard to find, you know what I mean? Like to find the, the right, the things that he'll eat in, in the Atkins, you know what I mean? What are those three things he eats, Sarah? He eats pizza. We tried making a keto pizza. He eats a little bit of it, but not very much. Um, he eats yogurt and she told me to use the triple zero yogurts, which I've been trying with heavy whip. Um, so I've been doing that. Um, but he's not, I mean, he really has no interest. So it's really hard. And then the other thing is the drinks is that he always drank grape juice mixed with water. And he's really missing that. Like, I don't know what to give him instead. I cut, I, I've been trying different, uh, you know, flavoring things and he's not going for it. So that's hard. He's really not drinking much. Yeah, it's funny you say that the, the grape juice mixed with water. Um, so we drank Nestle grape water for five years, bottles and bottles and bottles. I used to think if we had to buy stock in it because that was our flavor. And um, we'd go to displays at the grocery store and they'd only have orange and we'd have to go home. Um, so that Nestle grape water was our go-to because it's, you know, carbohydrate free. Um, we actually made yogurt. Um, so, you know, yogurt makers are like just at Walmart and you can make it with heavy whipping cream and with, you know, dairy that's, that's full fat. Um, so that's a, another, you know, thing if you want to make it customized and make it closest as you can that, um, that triple zero, um, when I taste it, I think it tastes funny. I don't know if you think it tastes funny. I haven't tasted it to be yeah. honest, but <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I, I love yogurt and I've tried a lot of them and, I, and that one to me tastes a little funny because it has a, um, it has a, a sweetener on it that's, that's a little different. Um, uh, so, I mean, I think when kids are picky eaters, I mean, there are going to be kids that are poorly growing. I mean, kids that are truly not eating anything. And then there are kids who are just going to make it because you don't need a lot of calories. I mean, that's the thing that's really, the portions are so tiny. Um, if, I mean, there are kids who really just do very, very little. I mean, the, when I talked about the keto um, uh, cheesecake, I mean, I'm talking about something the size of less than, smaller than an English muffin. I mean, and that's their whole meal. Um, so if you have kids who don't care about food at all, it's almost simpler in the sense that you just get it in and then it's like a uh -huh. dose of medicine and you don't have to have them. I mean, there's, there's like the emotional component to it that families like meals and families like to eat together and pleasure is gained by eating. But if you have a kid that doesn't share that, they just don't care. Um, you could almost dose modified Atkins or keto like a medicine, like, okay, it's time, get it in, you know. And, um, so what happens, and, and then what happens, I know you said like about siblings, but so he's my youngest of eight. Yeah. And changing the whole family's diet is not going to work. Like I can't yeah. do that. Yeah. Um, so how do I make that work with my family? Yeah, I mean, the, you're lucky in the sense that he doesn't care about the food because then it's, that it's less of a problem with what other people are eating. Um, uh, and, and the kids that are on keto that are um, able to verbalize will often talk about being you know, on a special diet, like my food is magic, you know, that kind of stuff. And I, I think that's, I think the Charlie Foundation has a lot of that stuff that's really helpful for families to say, look, you know, they're going to be this food and there's going to be this food. Um, and I mean, to, to clarify, my family did not eat keto. I mean, we, we don't eat keto. <laughs> His sister, my husband and I do not eat keto, but we would maybe not have the unhealthy foods that nobody should, you know, should have in the house anyway, that kind of stuff. And that was the modification that seemed to make a big difference because, you know, somebody opening up, you know, cookies would 
you know, make him feel real bad. So, um, yeah, modified, right. modified Atkins is really forgiving. I mean, that, that would be actually a really nice first try, especially if he's not caring about food that much. Okay. I mean, yeah, so that, I mean, that's what we're, we're aiming for. And then eventually going to keto if it doesn't work, because right now he's on four different medications and he's doing well. I mean, I guess it's considered well, he has about a seizure a month, but those are always status. Yeah. So it's kind it's of like exactly our... Exactly how we were too, Sarah, before we yeah. started keto. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we started it at six years old, so about the same age. And um, when you say picky and only eating, like still to this day, even though we're off keto, my son eats a bean and rice and cheese taco every single day for lunch, three of them every single wow. day for lunch and you can't even sway it to try and like let's eat a case of it no nope. he wants his three tacos <laughs> so on keto when he was six we were like how are we going to do this he likes tacos so we just did um i think we we had to cut out the shells but i think we did butter and beans like slices of butter laid in there with just a few um of the refried beans and of course it was all measured and weighed out maybe some cheese, but he still got his tacos. So he was happy. He was satisfied. So I think the key is finding something that they like, like Sarah said, something that interests them. And then once, once you get that meal, stick with that for a while. And then maybe later on his um, interest for other foods may grow, but at least you have that ratio. Once you get that meal, you can have the same thing every day. Okay. Thank you so much. And you, you might also want to look in the chat box. There's a, another um, mom on there, I believe. And she said her son was just like yours. And mm-hmm. now he has food, four foods he eats on keto. So you might want to try and um, get in touch with her through the chat box. I think you guys could talk and kind of okay. get each other your emails and maybe you can swap mm-hmm. ideas. And I know even on, um, if you look in your family network group if someone else is in your region that might be on keto has a child the same age maybe you know take advantage of that group and try and like get in touch with them and maybe have a keto family buddy and you guys bounce ideas off of each other and you never know what you could come up with okay thank you so much you're welcome are there any other questions hey sarah it's matthew pooley hi hey um, there's a, a lot of talk about kids that will only eat a few things. Did have you? Did you ever deal with actual like food fatigue? We, yes. We're on. We're yes. on. Uh, um, a modified Atkins, and we started at a very young age, but um, we're finding feeding has been getting more difficult, and we think that it's possibly that he's getting fatigued with the, the recipes that we're giving him. Absolutely. Yeah, actually, we had really good luck with the keto cookbook because it has these big glossy pictures. And so I could say verbally, you know, do you want a taco? And he would say, no, 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 no. But if we took out the book together and we flipped through the pages, he would point and he'd say, I want that. And so we'd look and we'd say, okay, this looks like a, you know, pasta primavera or something and and we would we would try it out um keto uh the charlie foundation also has a lot of good pictures really really nice looking photography and so um if there's the ability to i mean you might make the choice you might say like we're gonna try chocolate cake you know or something but um but if you if you have any ability to have them point to a picture and and show a little interest in something then then that might be worth a shot too Great questions, guys. We have just a few more minutes if anyone else has any questions. No? Well, wonderful. I'm sure this was helpful to so many. So thank you so much for uh, pausing your day and your patience to see us um, and talk with us and share your knowledge. Um, I know the group appreciates it as uh, does DSF. So thank you so much. Um, You guys, very important July 9th webinar. If you plan on, or if you had planned on coming on uh, to see Dr. Lori Isom, that has been canceled. We're trying to get it. 
Oh, I think we lost her. Can everybody hear me? I can hear you. Okay, we're trying to get her to reschedule, um, but we do not have a rescheduled um, time and date for her. So I will be emailing you shortly just to remind you that it is canceled and um, we have all of your emails, so we will email you as soon as we have it. Thank you, everyone. Great, thank you. Thank you so much, Sarah. Take care.